All right, so I want to review some cardiac physiology, just a few things. Um, so in the heart, we have systole and diastole. So what is systole? Is that contraction or relaxation? Um, systole is contraction. Contraction. And when we contract in systole, what heart sound do we hear? S1 or S2? S1. S1. And this S1 heart sound, it's being made by the opening or the closing of a valve? Um, the sound is made by the clo closure of the valve. Closure, exactly. Mm -hmm. So which valves are closing in systole? Uh, we contract in mitral and tricuspid valve. Mitral and tricuspid, exactly. All right. So if those are closed, well, then which ones are open? Pulmonic and aortic. Exactly. So that's so the and pulmonic. Exactly. All right. So in diastole, what do we have? Contraction and relaxation. Relaxation. Obviously, yeah, relaxation. Is that just the upper side. Exactly. Is it S1 or S2? S2. S2. Is that made by the opening or closing of a valve? Closer. Closure of the valves. Which valves are closing in diastole? Aortic and pulmonic. Exactly. And therefore, which ones are opening? Mitral and tricuspid valve. You got it. So now, if they were to mention systolic murmurs, what you should be thinking about is, well, in systole, we have mm -hmm. contraction. S1 will be affected. Mm -hmm. It might be louder. It might be softer. Uh -huh. But it will be affected, S1. Yeah. And <clears throat> it might be due to an issue closing or an issue opening, opening of these valves. valves. Which ones? Well, it's an issue of the mitral and tricuspid closing. What would that be called when well, we have uh, difficulty closing of the valves? Um, is it called, uh, is that stenosis or regurge? It's regurge. Yeah, it's called regurge. Exactly. And therefore, what about when we're opening? What would that be called? Trouble opening? Uh, that would be a stenosis. Exactly. Stenosis. Mm -hmm. All right. So if they say a systolic murmur, we say it's mitral or tricuspid closing. Close. So it's going to be either mitral or tricuspid regurg if it's a regurg. systolic murmur. Or it might be aortic and pulmonary opening. So it might be aortic and pulmonary stenosis. stenosis. And then vice versa is true for diastolic murmurs. murmurs. Mm -hmm. Now, they're not going to mention regurg or stenosis in the vignette. Chances are they won't. But what they will do is kind of clue you in. Right? They'll give you a couple of buzzwords. So how can they, how can they say regurg without saying regurg? Um, what, word would they use? what word would they use? Increased sure. volume. Okay, but in regards to, their, sure, the increased volume, all right. But in regards to the sound that the murmur makes, um, I don't know. Lowing. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. Lowing. Lowing. Lowing murmur. Okay. Lowing murmurs. Right. <clears throat> kind of, kind of what it sounds like. Okay. Right. All right. Whereas with stenosis, what word would they use? Um, maybe rumbling. Rumbling. Exactly. Rumbling. rumbling murmur. So therefore, if I were to tell you that a patient has a holosystolic blowing murmur, you would say, well, first of all, you said systolic. So that means contraction, S1, closure of mitral and tricuspid, and opening of aortic and pulmonary. Okay. And then I said blowing. So that means blowing is associated with regurg, which is associated with closing. Well, who's closing in systole? Mitral and tricuspid. Mitral and tricuspid. Yeah. All right. So it'll, it might just be mitral regurge or tricuspid regurge. Regurge. So therefore, how do I, how do I separate them? I tell the patient uh, taking a deep breath. Okay. You see? What would happen when they take in a deep breath? What would happen to blood flow? Uh, when you take a deep breath, blood flow to the right side of the heart will increase. Exactly. Meaning... 
that the heart murmur, the, the murmur on that side, on the right side of the heart. And which valves are on the right side of the heart? The tricuspid valve. And? And pulmonic valve. Exactly. So that means that if we have more blood on the right side, a tricuspid or a pulmonic murmur would increase, or it, well, it would get louder. Louder. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. So if you tell the patient to inhale and it gets louder, then I'm going to say it's a tricuspid issue, maybe mm -hmm. tricuspid rebridge. Okay. Yeah. If I tell them to exhale, then therefore we're going to have more blood going to the left side of the heart. Right. Yeah. And if it had been mitral, uh, mitral uh, regurg, it would have gotten louder on that side. On that side. Yeah. Okay. This is how you can apply. You, can, you should be able to apply this to all murmurs. Right? What if I give you a patient with a um, diastolic rumbling murmur and an opening snap? Well, diastolic, we're um, relaxing. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned rumbling, mm -hmm. so that is associated with stenosis. That's right. Uh, the valve that should be open during the acetylate are mitral and tricuspid. Exactly. So mitral, tricuspid, stenosis. Exactly. And therefore, how do I separate the two? Uh, tell the patient to inhale. Take a deep breath, exhale. please. That's it. Take a deep breath and exhale. And you just compare and contrast. If it gets louder uh, when they inhale, it's right-sided murmur, so a tricuspid. Uh -huh. if, it's, yes, if it gets louder when they exhale, left-sided murmur, so they form mitral, uh, mitral stenosis. Okay. See? Okay. All right. And that's okay. how you play with the murmurs. Okay. All right. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome.